Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to my series on design for 3D printing. Contrary to popular belief, you cannot 3D print anything, at least if you want a good quality part. You must design your part for 3D printing. In this series, I'll teach you the tips and tricks to design the best possible parts and avoid some of the common mistakes. I'll cover basic topics as well as dive into engineering and manufacturing. In this episode, I'm going to talk about some general engineering considerations. As you know by now, the printer only works in the XY plane, and this is the property that must be considered when you design and lay out your parts in the slicing software. This also means that you need to orient your part so that the stresses will flow in the XY plane. Let's say that you have a clamp like this that's supposed to grip a pole. It must be printed in the XY plane. It must be printed in the XY plane. It must be printed in the XY plane. Hopefully that catches on because I'm really serious about this. I've done lots of these and I've never found an exception to this layout. Here's why. The filament to filament bond between the layers is very weak compared to the filaments themselves. This isn't surprising really, but I see a lot of parts printed that ignore this fact. If your part is subjected to tension, torsion, or bending, then you must orient your part so that the stresses lie in the XY plane. That way, a continuous filament flows all the way around the part. I'll say that again, but in a slightly different way, because it's very, very important. The filaments must follow the path of the stresses, like so, or else your part will break. It can help to think of the part kind of like the grain of wood. It's hard to split wood across the grain. That's why you stand it up on its end and split it with the grain. And 3D prints aren't much different. If the wood analogy doesn't make much sense, then maybe think of it like carbon fiber or fiberglass, which are also anisotropic materials like the fused filament 3D prints. The fibers need to be laid up so that they face into the stresses. It's the same principle here. I printed some tinsel testing coupons a while back to do some testing of 3D prints and to show how part orientation is most important. I oriented the part in each of the three possible, seemingly logical orientations, as you see here. A raft was used to hold it all in place while it printed. Only one of them would achieve the result I'm looking for, however. Can you figure out which one, long pause? It's not this tall one right here. Each of these layers is a natural shearing plane, and it's unpredictable where this part would actually break. It would probably break here in the test section, but it could easily break up here where the gripper pins reside. The filaments are at 90 degrees to the stresses. As you can guess, this guy is no good for bending either. Snap! It also isn't this part right here. It looks like the filaments are in line with the stresses. And yes, they are. But there's a catch. Look right here in the grip area. Shearing plane. When the pins are in here and it's pulled on, these little tabs behind the gripper pins could easily shear off. This guy is okay in bending though, but it's not the optimal layout. You can see that support should have been added here because this gap was a little bit too far for the filament to bridge. But you know how I feel about support. And that leaves this guy. He's my Goldilocks. It was printed flat like this. There's one continuous filament that flows all around the part and you can see that there is now no natural shearing plane behind the gripper pins. And since this gap between the grippers is larger than the gap in the test section, the part will break in the test section, which is exactly what I want. This guy is also good in bending. I'll go into more depth on bending in a separate episode though. As a final example for this episode, consider this, my impossible triangle. It was printed this way on the bed, so these two legs can handle bending loads and are very strong. But when the extruder gets to this vertical leg, we have shearing planes all the way up and the part is going to snap right here if it's ever subjected to a bending load. This orientation is no good either for the exact same reason. If we do something funky with it, uh, then the whole part is less than optimal. There's simply no good way to print this part and it should be redesigned. I had to advise some students to change their design a while back because they were running into this exact problem with the part for one of their quadcopters. They designed a part that looked like this. 
it needed to clamp around a strut and then support something over here. Not surprisingly, it snapped right here several times before I was able to advise a design change. In conclusion, if you have clamps or hooks, make sure to orient them in the XY plane on the bed. The filament must follow the stresses. Filament follows function. Filament follows function. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub Fab Lab. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And what do you want to make?